Okay everyone, let's go ahead and do an example of our confidence intervals. All right, so this is our beginning with our guide, and so let's start off at the top. It just talks about how often we do not know what the population mean and standard deviation, but many times this is exactly what we are looking to approximate. This is why we do studies and polls to discover what we do not know. Okay, so we're gonna use confidence intervals to help us make these approximations. Okay, so O'Shea is trying to do a study on the number of hours students at his college spend on their phone each week. He randomly selected 81 students and had them report their number of hours on their phone for a week. Uh, he decides a good place to start is trying to determine the average number of hours spent on their phone each week. He wants to have a 96.5 confidence level. Okay, so if we start off here, um, one of the first things that we need to do is kind of remember how can we identify what our population, the data is, what parameter that we're interested in. So let's kind of go through and just look at this. So the first thing, let's go look at the list of recorded hours on the phone for the week for each of the 81 players sampled. Okay, so if we look at that, uh, we could go down and we'd say, okay, this would be our data. It's just the list of the data that we have. So we could just put in D. Okay, number number two. So it says the number of hours spent on the phone by a single student from the sample. <clears throat> and that right there uh, would be our variable. It's just asking us, like basically the, our variable is like, is the question that we're asking somebody, how many hours are you spent? Are, are you spending on the phone? Next one down, the mean number of hours spent on the phone by the 81 students selected, that would be our statistic because it is a measurement that is coming from the entire sample. So we're looking at this measure, uh, B for a statistic. Next one down, all students at O'Shea's college, that would be our population. That's the, that's the big group that we're looking to make some conclusion about, so E. Next one down, the mean number of hours spent on the phone for the entire college, that would be the parameter. And we could put uh, F for that guy. And then the 81 students selected to measure the number of hours spent on their phone for a week, that is going to be our sample, letter C. Excellent. All right, so we went ahead and were able to identify the different parts of our problem. Let's go ahead and scroll on down. So it says, okay, does O'Shea need to worry about the distribution of the individual time spent on the phone? Provide a short answer explaining why or why not. Okay, so we could choose yes, because the original distribution is always critical. No, because the sample size is sufficiently large to invoke the central limit theorem. No, because the original distribution is normal. Or yes, because the sample size is insufficiently large to invoke the central limit theorem. All right, so if we go back up and we look at the original scenario, there's nothing in here that talks about the original distribution. But we know that from the central limit theorem, as long as we have a sample size of 81, we know that the sampling distribution is in fact going to be approximately normal. And so since we have a sample size of 81, we can say that, uh, do we need to be worried about the original distribution? And we can say no, because the sample size is sufficiently large to invoke the central limit theorem. Okay, so the next question that I have is, what's the best point estimate of the average time on the phone? So this is going to be our sample mean. So if we want to answer that, we need to go ahead and click on our data, and let's go ahead and copy this, and let's bring it over to our commander. So we can just import our data, we can do from our file, get it loaded in, and we have now the hours of phone per week. All right, so if we want to know the sample there are our point estimate or a sample mean. Uh, what we can do is we can go up to just our basic statistics, do our descriptive statistics, and we could just click on numerical summaries. We want this hours on the phone per week. And I can click on what do I want? Do I want the mean, standard deviation? You know what, I'm gonna click on the standard error as well. And let's just go ahead and click okay. And now I've got my mean, I've got my standard deviation, and the point estimate, my point estimate of the population parameter is my sample mean. And I can just go ahead and paste that right in. Um, just remember default is to at least four decimal places. So if since I've got, you know, five or six here, I can just copy and paste it over. Okay, next, I can provide the confidence interval for the average phone times, uh, phone time between two times. Okay, so it's wanting an upper and a lower bound. All right, so there's a couple ways that we can do this. So we know, let me grab 
this guy real quick. We know that for mu, we know that mu is going to be contained within. And do like a, we'll do like the number. Oh dear. We'll do that for our contained within, and we know that it's going to be contained within the lower bound to the upper bound. And we know that for the means, the confidence interval is going to be equal to its x bar. And we can do plus or minus, sorry, equals plus or minus, sorry, plus or minus our margin of error. OK, we already know what x bar is. We were able to calculate that. So x bar equals that 17. And the margin of error. So there are two ways that we can calculate the margin of error. We can do that z, and then we can do the sub um, alpha divided by 2 multiplied by sigma divided by the square root of n. That's one way we can do it. Or we know that we can do the margin of error as equal to t, and then it'd be the degrees of freedom, comma, alpha, divided by 2, multiplied by s divided by the square root of n. And we have to pick which one of these do we know. So we use this upper one when we know population standard deviation and we use the bottom one when we don't know oops let's get that fixed don't know the population standard deviation all right so let's go back and take a peek at what we actually know so if we go back and we look at our problem it doesn't give us any indication from like a previous study or like common knowledge of what this population standard deviation is so we are left to use this guy down here to calculate out our margin of error so we need a t a t value uh, and then we also need to get this s and remember that this guy right here is called the standard error. It's going to be equal to that guy. So just for help, we're going to delete that guy out because we don't need it. So let's calculate out our standard error. Now, the way that we can do that is remember, we have our standard deviation. It was given to us. And let me see if I can't increase our text size so you can see this a little bit better. There we go. That's a lot better. OK, so here's what we can do. We can do this guy divided by the square root of 81, because that was our sample size, not 87, 81. There we go. And we, did it, we hit Enter, and we get this 0.1848, whatever, this guy, the standard error. But hey, check it out. When I clicked on the options for my numerical summary i also clicked on the standard error and it kicks it out to you for you as well so this step right here is actually already taken care for you and our commander will do it so we can just paste that in and we know what the standard error is great so all that we're left with is we need to know what this t-score is okay well the t-score we can get if we go back to our basic statistics we go to our continuous distribution to t distribution. And remember, when we're looking for a critical t value, we need to use the quantiles. So we need a probability, and we need the degrees of freedom. All right, so the degrees of freedom is just n minus 1, so we're going to use 80. And now our probabilities. So the probability is that alpha divided by 2, or this part of our argument right here, alpha divided by 2. So we should probably go figure out what alpha is. Well, we know that we want a confidence level of... 96.5 so alpha is just going to be 1 minus 0.965 and that gives me 0 
And we're going to do that 0 0.035 divided by 2 to figure out our probability. And it's going to give me 0 0.175, or 0 0.0175. So I'll copy that, and I'll put that up in my probabilities. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So it gives me this 2.144836. Great. We now have a T value. Give me just a second. Let's see if I can grab it. There we go. And so we know that our T is going to be equal to this guy. I'm actually only interested in the absolute value of it. I'm just interested in how far from the mean we're going. So I'll put that as that 2. And now I can figure out my margin of error. So my margin of error is just going to be this standard error multiplied by this critical t value. Ooh, give me just a second. Uh, whatever. We'll copy it from over here. And that gives me this 0.39 as my margin of error. And if I want now my upper and lower bound, I can take this mean. And I can subtract from it the margin of error. That gives me my lower bound. Oops. Let's put in our lower bound real quick. And we'll put in our upper bound, which is exactly the same thing, only instead of a negative sign, it's going to be a positive sign. And I can say that I'm 96.5% confident that the true uh, population mean is somewhere between these two values. And so there is our answer right there. Let's go ahead and drop these in. Now, there is a much easier way than doing what we just did. So let me let you in on a secret. Our commander can do this for us. So we went through all of this and we're trying to figure out our confidence interval. If we just go to statistical inference, we go to confidence intervals, we go to confidence interval for a sample, and then do confidence interval for the mean, and we click on it. All we have to do is just pick out the variable, which is our son phone per week. We, if we know what the variance is, uh, we can put it in. So that would be, you know, because we knew what sigma was, we just have to put in the variance here. Or if it's unknown, right now it's unknown. And we need to give it the confidence level, which was 96.5. And if I click OK, look what it kicks out. It kicks out like the exact same values. Now, it looks like there might be a tiny, tiny bit of a rounding error from what we did. Uh, and that probably comes from we were calculating on rounded numbers, uh, but they're, they're basically identical. So now you know how to do it by hand, and you also know how to make our commander do it for you. Okay, next question. Is this confidence interval one-tailed or two-tailed? Well, this one is two-tailed because we're putting the error on two ends of this. And we know that it's a two-tailed test because up top, it didn't give us any direction on which way this confidence interval should be. If they don't give you a direction, then you just assume that you are doing a two-tailed test. So we'll go ahead and put on two-tailed. Moving on down, we need to collect, we need to select a confidence interval. Okay, so there's some good ways to say it and there's some bad ways to say it. Uh, you can go back and reference our video on how there are good ways and bad ways to do our confidence interval and that could help you out with some of these. Uh, but if we go through and we look, we can say there is, we are 95% confident that the true mean time spent on the phone for students at O'Shea's College is somewhere between uh, 17.58 and 18.37 hours. And we're just going to go ahead and click that guy. What I encourage you to do is go back and try to figure out what is wrong with these 
three uh, with these three confidence interval statements. There is a big problem in each of them. So you can go ahead and try to try to figure those out. Okay, so moving on down, let's say suppose O'Shea wanted a confidence interval to claim that the average phone time was at least some value. Okay, so if we're doing this, we are now doing a one-tailed confidence interval, and we know that our one-tail confidence interval it's exactly the same as our two-tailed interval, but it's going to be either plus or minus. And the margin of error is calculated slightly different in a one-tail test. Okay, so the margin of error here, it's very similar, is the exact same thing, except instead of dividing alpha by two, we just have alpha. Okay, so we can get this value. Uh, let's do it by hand first, and then I'll show you us how we can kind of cheat the system and make our commander give us what we want. Okay, so first of all, let's get that t value. And if we want that t value, we need to go back to our basic statistics, random variables, continuous, t distribution, and the quantiles. And instead of doing alpha divided by two, we are just going to do alpha. Same degrees of freedom, and we can go ahead and click OK. And this time, I just want, or I guess just like last time too, we just want that t to be the, uh, to be the absolute value of that t score. Okay, in the s, we still have that guy, our standard error is the same as above. It hasn't changed at all. So in order to calculate this guy out, let's go ahead and just grab our standard error and let's multiply it by our t value. And that'll give us our stand our margin of error that we're going to be using. So I'll just hit equals that. And now we've got to figure out which direction we want to go. So it says, suppose O'Shea wanted the confidence interval to claim that the phone, that time on the phone was at least some value. Okay, if we want it to be at least some value, this is going to be a one-tailed interval with the value, uh, or with the error put on the bottom, because we want to say that, that we think that it's some minimum value, but it could be more. Let me do a quick graphic for you real quick so that we can actually see this. Um, so let's go to random variables are continuous. Let's do a T. Let's plot a T distribution. And we're going to say that we've got 81 degrees of freedom. We're going to plot the density function. Uh, we'll plot the X values. And what I want to do is I'm going to plot from, we'll do, we'll do like negative, just, I just need a picture real quick. And we'll go to, I think we want to go to like two, or we'll do uh, uh, 1.8, or negative 1.8. Okay, so here is what we're actually looking for. So this is a, a normalized, or a, it'd be a studentized distribution for this T, but basically what we are doing is uh, where this zero is, we're going to put uh, what we have for x bar, and we're saying that it is at least some value. So from our mean, we've got to go down so, so much, and then we can say that uh, we are 96% confident that we're at least some value. Okay, so we've got to go down in order to get this first one. And we'll just close out of that guy. So we've got what we need. Uh, let's go ahead and grab our values then. So first thing first, we need our X bar. And we can just do X bar minus our new margin of error. And we get 17 this guy. Now on one tail confidence intervals, we are going to, you can use this little drop down and click infinity. 
uh, because we're saying that it's at least this value and it could possibly go to infinity. All right, so is this confidence interval one tail or two tailed? We would say one tailed. And let's look at our confidence interval state statement. And I would say that we are 95% confident that the true mean time spent on the phone for students at O'Shea College is at least 17.64 hours. So I want to click on that guy and I will let you guys figure out what is wrong with these three um, misleading statements. All right, next one down. So it's suppose O'Shea wanted a confidence interval to claim that the average phone time was no more than some value. Okay, so for that guy, let's do another plot with our t distribution and instead I am going to go to and here's my distribution so I'm saying that from this maximum value we think that it that the amount of time that students are spending on the phone is from this point down okay so this is kind of what we're looking so we need to go above the mean and it's exactly the same as what we did before x bar except we're going to do plus our margin of error we can hit enter and we can grab this guy as what we think is that upper value and we can paste it and then here we need to put in not infinity but negative infinity and if you want to type it out, it's just two O's that they're using. So you can just type out OO for your infinity symbol. Okay, next one down is this confidence interval one tailed or two tailed. So because one is stretching to like the negative infinity, we know that this is one tailed. And we can say that we are 95% confident that the true mean time spent on the phone for students at O'Shea's College is no more than 18.32 hours. All right, let's take a second and see how we did. And from the top to the bottom, we were able to get all greens. We were able to kick out all of our answers. So that is how we take care of one and two-tailed confidence interval testing for means. Good luck.